Hi you folks, just wanted to say a happy new year. This is my first video of the year and I'll show you what my plans are, especially for the powder coating. Let's have a look at this. Right, well, those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis will know that I've built my own powder coating oven, which is this one here, uh, made out of an old filing cabinet. And um, powder coating is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, but I've never had the sort of inclination to find out more about it. I've watched a few videos on it. And uh, anyway, cut a long story short, I was able to get hold of the Easy Coat Magic uh, powder coating setup, which I'll show you that now, hold on. <sighs> This is the Easy Coat system, as I've showed to you many of other times. And this is from Electrostatic Magic here in the UK. It comes in a package like this, or you can buy it without the box. And as you can see, no voltage, no, no mains electric is needed. Obviously, you need a compressor. But uh, this is the Easy Coat system now. If you buy it in the box like this, it's about £150 worth, I think, when you buy it like this. You get the gun, you get a filter, you get the strap for your wrist for the... Uh, ground in the piece and you get provision for a couple of uh, bottles of uh, powder coat there and it all comes as I say in that nice handy pack like that. Now that's the easy part buying that. I then decided to build this powder coating oven and as you can see it's a half height probably up to about there when it stands on the floor. This was a filing cabinet or a, an office cabinet not necessarily a filing cabinet and all I basically did was line it i've got a series of videos on this uh, and put two elements there well basically i had a spare cooker which i sourced off of facebook for i think 15 pounds something like something like that i stripped it down i took the elements out of it put them in the base of that and basically lined this whole thing with extra metal and insulation between and this has been working absolutely fine as a powder coating cabinet. If you look on the top there, there's the uh, controls for it, all fitted to the actual top of the unit. And all I have to do is to set the timer, turn the thing on basically, and that's it. All, everything's protected and it all works A-OK. -okay. Now, I've had so many people say to me that they're a bit daunted about building their own powder coating oven. You know, they've watched the videos and they're probably not up to uh, building it themselves. And I've recommended to them to buy one of these little portable mini ovens they're called they come in various sizes i've looked at all the sizes and the most cost efficient which is a 45 liter one you can get small ones for about 21 liters they're not they haven't got a big enough space inside 45 liters you can buy this unit here which is a netter one it's got two hot plates on the top as well if you need that as well i possibly don't need that but um 45 liters we got this for under 100 pounds on uh, amazon and I'll put a link in the uh, description below this. 45 litres, the next step up, if I was going to go one step bigger, would be to buy a 60 litre one, but then you're talking about uh, double the money at least. So cost efficient wise, something like a 45 litre is going to be ample to do what we need it to do. The reason being is that we do a lot of, I do a lot of small stuff when I'm restoring parts, and to get the big iron fired up, um, I can have it on for about an hour, and that's on... Um, it takes about 25 minutes to heat up fully. This thing, it's up within sort of five minutes, 10 minutes, if that. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll give you a quick look around it, but this is a 45 litre Netto one. So coming and opening the door, as you can see, you've got a tray in there, and it did come with a, a, a drip tray, which obviously can go in there as well, which I don't really need because that actually takes up space. So that's coming out. And I think you'll see it's a quite a big space inside here now. You've got elements top and bottom. And as I say, the grill thing, I'll just sit that on its highest setting and just leave that in there. And then you can either dangle parts on the ropes down there or put this on the lowest setting, which is that one down there, and stand parts on there like that. And just to give you some sort of idea of size, now there's something you could easily fit in there. It just gives you a scale of the actual size that you can get in there, that falls in there as you can see. So you can easily powder coat your Briggs & Stratton Classic uh, recoil covers, they'll come out very nice. More things that I'll be thinking about restoring in the new year is something like the fuel tanks on these Briggs & Stratton uh, push to prime 
carburetors. I'm going to be restoring them. I've got quite a few of these, as you can probably see. And I've also found a way, which I'm going to speak about in a minute, of uh, actually reproducing these decals or decals on there, as you can see, to keep them looking original. Because one thing that we normally do, we normally paint these, and as you know, or you have to lacquer them with a, a, a uh, an automotive lacquer to stop them peeling. Most people don't bother. They give them a coat of normal rattles can paint and as soon as you spill any paint on them, it bubbles up. So as you can see, they fall in there. That's absolutely massive. Again, different shapes of uh, tanks there off of different uh, lawnmowers. This comes off of the web lawnmower, which again, I would have to fire up this big cabinet just for the sake of a little part like this. And you know, things like little brackets at all. You, you know, I, I wouldn't want to have to fire this up just to do a few little hanging brackets. But having this, you can just put that on the top shelf, as I've said to you. Get some little hanging wires and actually hang the brackets in there and do all the brackets that you need to do to uh, finish off lawnmowers, you know, things like that. I'm going to be working on my zinc plating setup again and nickel plating. I'm going to tidy all that lot up, as you say, that part of the workshop's in a right mess at the moment. But getting into powder coating, if you get the Easy Static Magic Kit, the, um, the same system as what I've got, for example, and one of these, for under 200 quid, you can be powder coating. As I say, this is absolutely ideal. And this is so simple to use. Let me show you. So again, I'll leave it on the top there. Push that in there like that. I'll turn it on. And then what you've got is the top control is obviously for the hob. We don't really need to use them. That can just stay in the off position. You've got your temperature control. Now I've worked it out already that 190, I'll just take it a little bit under 190 because these powders that I've got activate at 180 degrees. So that stays there like that. You can either have the top or the bottom, or both of the elements on at the same time. I've got mine set for both to come on at the same time. And then there's your timer. So all we've got to do is just time that for, let's say 10 minutes or so. And I've just turned that on now. And I'll let you just see, I've got a heat gun here, as you can probably see. Put that in there at the moment, shine it on the back. At the moment, it's already up to 60 degrees. See, look, I've only just turned it on, look. So we're looking at probably 180 degrees to get to that up to temperature. And I'll say, I'll show you how long that takes. I'm not gonna cut or edit this video. You'll see it heat up in the actual time it does, basically. So anyway, so as I said to you, restoring these things, making them look nice and making them look original, one thing we're lacking is the graphics on there sort of thing, as you can see there. Now, again, there's different ways to do this. I have been using uh, water slide transfer papers. They're okay. Um, it can be a bit hit and miss, and I thought to myself, I'd like to really produce them in vinyl, but to buy vinyl graphics from uh, a reputable company, uh, they can be about four, four, four to five pound each for something of that sort of size. So I had a little idea, and I've just done a little mock-up here, and these are the ones I've actually produced on my own printer. Now, although the sizes aren't to scale or whatever, and I've not done the outline properly, I think you'll find there, these are actually vinyl graphics, and I was hoping to be able to reproduce uh, the ones, for example, that go on the top of these and maybe even these sort of things. So I would have to photocopy or, or get copies of these or find some decent ones first of all. And then I can print them on my laser printer and then print them onto actual vinyl. And they're, all, and they're actually cut out contour cut as well using my craft cutter. Now I'm going to be showing you how to do this or, or how I do this rather on my other channel, which is my home print channel. That used to be my T-shirt training uh, channel and mug printing when we, we finished doing that last year. But I thought I'm gonna give this a go now, uh, as I've got a craft cutter where I can produce single color vinyl stickers, which I have done for lawn mowers, but I want it to be able to produce full color ones like these and just be able to peel them off and then stick them onto a front of a lawn mower, for example. I've tried it, I've tested it. This is the result of my first test and it does work. And it's far, far cheaper, believe me, than buying stickers off of a reputable dealer. They might not be the greatest of quality. They're waterproof. Um, I've printed them at home and I can basically print any sticker, any size myself for my own uh, means, which is gonna be restoring stuff and things like that. So when I'm able to powder coat these and get these totally glossy, I've now got the facility. I'll need to photograph or find some decent ones of these, first of all, photograph them, take them into Photoshop, size them up, and then I can print out as many of these as I like and actually refurbish these. And then if I wanted to, they sell for 25 uh, to 30 pounds on eBay as a complete set. All I've got to do is powder coat them, uh, put new diaphragm and gaskets in them now, uh, clean them all up, clean the jets out and all that, re-powder coat them, put the new graphics on and hey presto, uh, new primer bulb, sorry, and that'll be a, a saleable item, plus restore them whenever I do them myself. Right, so let's have a little measure of temperature at the moment. Just open the door now. 
We're already up to, look at that, 178 degrees centigrade. We're looking at 180, so we're basically now up to temperature, and that's taken five minutes, if so, if that, to do that. And all I would do then would be to put my powder coated part hanging in there, leave it for the 10 minutes. I can actually look at the piece through the glass door, and as you can see, it's ideal for me if I wanted to film that as well. I could just put that on there like that and actually film the uh, transformation of the powder coat, which I may do in some of my restoration videos. I'm not too sure yet. Just keep your glass clean and then you can actually see and film the actual stuff powder coating, as you can see like that. Look absolutely fantastic. So if a powder coating oven is doubting or daunting for you to build, just go out and buy an 80 pounds or a 90 pounds one of these. This one's a netter one. 45 litres don't really go below 45 litres internal capacity because the small ones aren't really very good. You're not going to be able to get much in that as well. And I've also got this as well because when I do the little die cast cars, when, between paint jobs for example, I can put this on a really low setting and just dry the cars and really speed up the drying process by putting them in the little oven like that. So it's got many, many uses this as well. Plus I can make myself a cup of tea if I wanted to as well. I'm in the process of clearing out the workshop. I'm trying to get more room in here now. Um, I've got some nice new stuff as well. As you can see, I've got these over the Christmas period as well. These are very, very nice and handy. People are always moaning about me for not having uh, decent sp uh, screwdrivers and stuff like that. Only uh, cheap, I think this is about 19 pounds. We've got a full set of uh, big Phillips, little Phillips there. And also we got the um, small Torx ones as well in screwdriver form, again, which are very, very handy. And again, they're in a handy carrying case, so they can sit on the worktop as well. And there's some other screwdriver bits in there and also some Allen keys as well. So I've got that. I'm going to be freeing up the workspace along here now. All my chemicals for me, zinc plating is over here, which I'm gonna condense down and put in a smaller area. I'm not too sure where I'm gonna do that yet. I'd like to get that over there. Maybe sitting on top where them parts are for lawnmowers and stuff. I wanna re-rack that all out. So. I may put all the chemicals over in that corner over there. The pillar drill's coming off there and I'm gonna find a place to locate that a bit lower. And that frees up all this workbench there. Well, I'll probably put the grinders right on the end of the workbench there and having them on a revolving plate so I can just spin that around for the mop. Someone else uh, suggested that as well, which was a really good idea. So this will all be cleared off and as I say, give me more chance to uh, have some decent working area here. It's all cluttered in here at the moment. I don't normally show you all this, but uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. And again, this is just like overspill of tins of paint and restoration paints and stuff like that, chemicals and stuff, cleaning products. I've got another filing cabinet to go in there. So all that stuff will then go in there and I'll try to bring that other filing cabinet through here as well. So all the paints are contained within a metal cabinet. So coming through here, as you know, I've got the bigger compressor now, which is down there. That's absolutely fantastic. Is that nearly pinging off now? I think that's nearly 10 minutes, but let's see the temperature. Yeah, actually, you've actually gone over, it's 209, just over 200 degrees. So I could even drop that down a bit lower. Look at that, look. Really goes up to temperature really quick. So I've got two powder coating ovens, one for the big stuff and one for the small stuff. Ideal, fantastic, I'm really happy with that. Well, she's just come in, my little baby, as you can see. Very good, that Sharon, I'm so happy with that. Sharon got me that. Happy brother. It's still on, baby, be careful. I thought it's nice and warm. Oh, is it? Come it? on, baby, I know. I'm just telling people now what we're gonna be doing with our live streams. Uh, a lot of people didn't enjoy the live streams on this channel, although we had loads of people watching it, did they? Yeah, a lot of people did. So well. we're gonna be doing them once in a while now on Butler's Empire channel. Uh, it's not gonna be every week. I've got to concentrate more on clearing this, like doing my projects and stuff like that. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Do you wanna get your bits then, baby? Go on in. Did you tell them about Bison? Yeah, I'm gonna tell them about Bison yeah. now. As you probably know, we lost Bison, our lovely Ruttweiler. He was nine years old, Sharon? Yeah. Uh, on New Year's Eve, he looked like he'd had enough basically. He deteriorated pretty quickly once the cancer had set into his back legs and uh, we had to take him down there and that was on Boxing Day. No, so it was New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Monday, Monday. What was that? Day before New Year's Eve. Day before New Year's Eve, so... Yeah. Oh, hello. Dinner's done. Dinner's done. <laughs> yeah, once you've, by the way, if you're going to buy one of these, don't do cooking in it after you've done powder coating because of toxins. We don't want that, do we, baby? Oh, no. So this is my little powder coating oven. And thanks very much. That's quite big, actually. It's that's what I just said, thought. 45 litres. Oh, I told you, baby, what? be careful. That's I've already said, right. Shao, look, you can get this inside it, no problem whatsoever. So that goes in there nice and easy, as you can probably see. I've already said that. Anyway, yeah, that's what the handle's there for, baby. You hold the handle. Yeah, but I don't know how I caught it. I don't no, know, baby. No. Don't worry about it. You won't do it again because I won't let you in here without a health and safety helmet on. <laughs> Go on, then. So yeah, thanks for those of you who give us nice kind wishes about Bison. That really was appreciated. A lot of you did like watching him. Oh, who's that? Barney? Can I say hello, Barney? He's lost. 
lost, he? He's lost now without his little friend, Come yeah. On. Come on, let's show you that by Barney. Sorry. He looks a bit depressed, doesn't you, Barney? Hey, sit down. He's never been without a dog. Sit down, no, he's always had two or three dogs in his life, hasn't he? And now he's all on his own. He's an old boy. He's an old boy as well, isn't he? We're going to have cuddles on the sofa again. Hey? And he's going deaf as well, shall he? Yeah, but I love him to bits. Yeah. Anyway. Come on, baby. So, lots to come, hopefully, this year on my channel. I know a few of you haven't been watching the live streams. So I did put a message on my uh, comments about, not about us, our community page, and uh, a lot of you did say that you didn't watch the live streams. Uh, I am hoping that you're going to be coming back now and starting watching now. I'm going to be doing a lot of tinkering about at the moment. I've got lots of projects to finish off as well. Get this workshop straight, and let's, say, let's, let's have some more workshop and uh, mechanical fun as well. I'm going to be pushing forward with my Retro Hacks channel. I'm going to be doing, obviously, some more restorations on that. Uh, that's taken a dive for some reason, I don't know why. We've had our lowest month for over well, about a year now on that, so I don't know why that is. Um, although there's lots more people come up and starting doing restoration channels now, and suddenly our takings have halved in that short time, in the space of a month. So I don't know why that is anyway, but uh, that's a bit gutting when you put a lot of work into your channel and then that something out of your control takes over, like the uh, algorithms on YouTube, and uh, that happens. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling now. I'm gonna carry on. You might not see a video very soon. I'm gonna be doing a lot of clearing up and tidying up and getting this place straight. I hope you understand that you don't have to go out and build a new powder coating oven. You can buy something like that and it will do a great job as well. Don't go for less than 45 litre internal diameter and you should be okay. Anyway, thanks very much. See you in the next video and until then, bye for now. <music>